guys. Today's presentation is about describing motion, and it's going to get us started for the first homework assignment in Chapter 2. So what we'll look at today is acceleration. So we'll find out what we mean by acceleration in physics. Uh, there's an a, uh, equation for it and certain units, and we'll do our best to make sense of it. Then we're going to move on to position versus time graphs and velocity versus time graphs, which are things that we don't actually use a whole lot long term, but we use them here at the start. And they're very useful and, uh, and interesting to know. They lay the foundation for a lot of what we do. So it, it's a really good thing to know about. And then finally, we'll wind up with the position equation, which is really ugly when you first see it. But when you understand what it means, it's really not that ugly after all. OK, so let's start in here. So this is, yeah, acceleration. Um, in physics, acceleration is any change in velocity. Now, in common English, uh, acceleration means going faster. So you step on the accelerator in your car and you go from a stop to going really, really fast. Uh, but in physics, uh, acceleration is any change in velocity. So that means that, yes, it can, can mean that you're speeding up, but can also mean that you're slowing down. So, yes, in physics, if we're slowing down, we say we are accelerating. Now, sometimes we'll say we have a negative acceleration, or sometimes we'll have a uh, hang a number on it and say our acceleration is like negative six uh, you know, meters per second squared or something. Um, but, uh, yeah, slowing down is an acceleration. Now, there's one more that you're uh, going to kind of have to take my word for here at, at first. Uh, but it will become clear in a couple of weeks when we, we get a deeper understanding of this stuff. Um, because velocity is, remember, is speed and direction. And since acceleration is any change in velocity, that means that if we change direction, we are also accelerating, even if we're not speeding up or slowing down. So if you drive your car around a corner at you know, 25 miles per hour and you never speed up and you never slow down, you're still accelerating according to physics, because you're changing direction. Okay, so acceleration is any change in velocity, speed up, slow down, or change direction. Now, how do we have an equation for this? We do have an acceleration equation. For this, I'm going to have to go to the clipboard because I can't draw on my, uh, on my uh, Chromebook, as you know. So here we go. Let's uh, do a focus here and open up and hopefully the blue screen will go away for us that's good okay i'm going to drag me down into the corner a little bit more and here we go so the uh, acceleration equation is this a stands for acceleration and we said that it's a change in velocity so it is delta v which is a change in velocity over some period of time so if we change our velocity in a short period of time, it's a relatively high acceleration. And if we change our velocity by the same amount, but it's over a longer period of time, then um, it's going to be a lower acceleration. Okay, so uh, let's uh, get some units on this one. So this, as we say, is acceleration. Acceleration. Um, this is our change in velocity. And this is a change in time. So it's some time interval, some period of time, so many seconds. So the way this look and the uh, velocity is always in meters per second, and the time is always in seconds. So the way this looks is um, meters per second times 1 over seconds. Because we're dividing by time. We're dividing by time. So meters per second times the inverse times 1 over second. So this is how we divide by time. We multiply by the inverse. So we get meters per second times 1 over seconds, which comes out to be meters per second squared because it's seconds times seconds. So the units for acceleration are meters per second squared. And that's kind of a weird one to get our head around, but I'm going to show help you with that in just a moment here. Um, but this is something you have to know, just like you have to know that the standard unit of time is seconds and the standard unit of velocity is meters per second. You got to know that acceleration is meters per second squared. And you have to know it well enough that when you see that symbol, meters per second squared, it immediately pops into your mind, oh, that's acceleration. 
Okay, so what does this actually mean, this meters per second squared thing? How can we make sense of that? Well, imagine we have a car here, and it's just sitting, speed zero, and it's sitting in the stop sign or a stoplight or something like that. And the light turns green, and it takes off, and it accelerates at a constant rate. So it goes faster and faster and faster as it pulls away. And after one second, it's going two meters per second. And after two seconds, it's going four meters per second. And after three, six meters per second, four seconds, eight meters per second. So again, a constant rate of acceleration, faster, smooth, pulling away from the stop sign. Well, if we look at the change in velocity, let's move this up here. Yeah, if we look at the change in velocity as time passes, we'll see that during each time interval, it increases by two meters per second. I think that's self-evident. So it's two, four, six, eight. So each second, it increases by two meters per second. So the way we could say this, one way we could say this just in, in plain English is to say that its speed is changing by two meters per second each second or two meters per second per second and this is a very common way that people will say this let me go back to uh, the clipboard here so uh, we can say two meters per second per second two meters per second per second describes that acceleration now as we know that word per means divided by in in uh, in math english speak um, so what we're saying here is two meters per second divided by seconds, which is multiplying by the inverse, one over seconds. And mathematically, when you play this out, comes out to be two meters per second times second, two meters per second squared. So a completely valid way to say this, this meters per second squared thing, is meters per second per second. And intuitively, that makes more sense to a lot of people. Now let's uh, see how this looks in the math to, so you can uh, see how this works out. So imagine we're looking at this, uh, this time interval right here from uh, timestamp one to timestamp two, one second has passed. And we want to do a calculation to see what the acceleration is. So um, the change in velocity is two meters per second during this time, because we go from two to four. So that's a change of two meters per second. And it takes one second, so we're going to divide that change in velocity by one second, and we wind up with an acceleration of two meters per second per second. That's a two meters per second squared there, two meters per second per second. Let me move me myself down here again. Okay, now, what if we take a longer time interval? Now, we know that the acceleration is constant, so we should get the same acceleration again, um, or something's wrong with our math. So now we're going to look at a longer time interval from timestamp one to timestamp four. And this is a three second interval. Uh, remember, uh, to do a delta, we take the final value minus the initial value. So four minus one is three seconds. Um, and the change in speed is from eight, uh, from two to eight, rather. So eight minus two is six. So in that time interval, our uh, velocity change is six meters per second. It took three seconds to happen. Six divided by three is two. And again, we get an acceleration of two meters per second per second. And I think you can see if we use any time interval that we want here from this data set, we will always wind up with the same acceleration of two meters per second squared. So let's look at an example of how we use this here. So we're going to find the acceleration uh, in this situation. So a gazelle sees a cheetah creeping closer and decides to run away. From a standstill, the gazelle is going 28 meters per second after four seconds, and we want to find the acceleration. So we have our gazelle, which goes from zero to 28 meters per second in four seconds. That's our given information. We're supposed to find the acceleration, and that's going to be in meters per second squared. And the equation that we're going to use is acceleration equals delta V over delta T. There we are. And the work that goes with this, we're just going to plug in the values that we have, equals the change in velocity, which is 28 meters per second, because we go from 0 to 28. And we're going to divide that by 4 seconds, and that's going to give us 7 meters per second squared. Probably not too surprising.
Okay. Now, what if we uh, look at another one here? That's this example that I have up here. What if we have a car that is already moving? It's driving at 20 meters per second, and it's going to stop in five seconds. What is the acceleration going to be? So um, we already have the given information. I'll just start right with the equation here. So the acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. Now, this case, it stops. So the change in velocity goes from 20 to 0. So the change in velocity is negative 20. So it's going to be negative 20 meters per second. And this happens in 5 seconds. So times 1 over 5 seconds. We see that we have meters on top and seconds squared on the bottom. So we should be in good shape on that one. And we wind up with a negative 4 meters per second squared for the acceleration. Now what this negative number, mean, negative number means is that we're slowing down. Uh, down here, we had a positive number for the acceleration, meaning the gazelle was going faster. And here we had uh, a negative one, meaning the car was slowing down to a stop, which kind of makes sense. Okay, now we don't just have to go with uh, speed and, uh, and time. We can also work this if we're given the acceleration. We can work backwards through this problem, and we should be able to arrive back at our given, uh, our given information here. So, um, for example, suppose we were given the acceleration of negative 4 meters per second, and the car was already driving at 20 meters per second, and the question would be, how much time did it take to stop? So in this case, we're going to use the same equation, A equals delta V over delta T, but we're just going to plug in the numbers in different places. So in this case, it is negative 4 meters per second squared, that's the acceleration, equals the change in velocity, which is negative 20 meters per second, times 1 over delta T. I can talk or I can write, but I can't do both. Anyway, um, so to, uh, to straighten this out algebraically, we want to get the delta T on the numerator. So we're going to multiply that to the other, time, so other side. So we're going to get delta T because we multiply both sides by delta T, delta T, and delta times delta T over here too, times delta T over here too. So we get multiply it to this side, and then we will divide by the uh, the negative four meters per second squared to get that on the side off, uh, to get that over on the right side. So that's going to be minus twenty meters per second times. 1 over negative 4 meters per second squared, right? What I'm doing here is I'm showing you why, how the units work out so you can see how they're useful to us. Now, when we set it up like this, we see that meters cancel and one of the seconds cancel, and that leaves us just with a single second unit, which is good because time should be in seconds. So we get negative 20 divided by negative 4 is 5. The only unit left is the seconds, so the answer is 5 seconds for the time, which is what we started with and is what we should get. But doing this is actually good practice. Uh, it's, it's nice to know what the true answer is if you're trying to become skilled at uh, using the, the units to help you out. Um, and also doing this is a good way to get more practice with an equation if you feel like you need a little more. Um, if, you know, I assign you homework problems and it hasn't quite gelled yet with you, this is an easy way to kind of create your own problems that you can practice with where you know the answer. You just kind of work the problem backwards. Uh, the other way we could have done this is to use the, um, uh, the acceleration and the time and figure out what the speed was.